So time to take, try and take uh, this year's summer crop off. I've just got one hive up here at the moment. Uh, there's another few hives over here from a colleague of mine who keeps some bees up here. And they're rather angry, which is why I've had to put my gear on already. I've only just got here and they're checking me out, which is a bit annoying. I'm gonna have to probably see if we can uh, sort those out if they stay like this uh, later in the year. Anyway, we shall see how much honey I've got kind of hoping I don't need the smoker. Hopefully if the clearer, clearer boards have worked properly, there should be very few bees in the supers where I'm taking the honey from, but you never quite know. So moment of truth, got a brood box there with a super underneath, which I'll leave on for them to collect the autumn flow in to give themselves enough food for winter. Then there's the clearer board just there. And we got two supers on top, which uh, I'm hoping are clear, but uh, we'll see. I haven't used uh, clearer boards for a few years. I've uh, just taken the supers off and, and cleaned the bees out um, using a, a brush to brush them off. It's a bit more work, but it's it's a bit less hassle in that you don't have to come up, put the clearer board on, go away for 24 hours, then come back. But uh, this time I thought I'd give them a go again. So let's find out. Certainly a lot clearer than yesterday. I put the board on. I think that's worked. Yep. So here's the clearer board on top. It uses what's called Porter B escapes, which are one way doors. You can see some of the bees on the underside there. There we go. It does seem to have worked quite well. The clearer boards had pretty much cleared all the bees. They're basically one-way doors. They let the bees go down into the brood box but not come back up. A few, uh, just a few stragglers left, which uh, I'll try and encourage to leave before I drive off. Let's go to the other apiary and uh, try and get that other super off. Right, second apiary, apiary. this one is in Church Crookham and uh, only one hive here that's, uh, well I've got three hives here but um, there's only one I think probably produced any honey. The other two uh, had uh, one swarmed and the other one had an issue with queens so uh, yeah we'll see you can see the apiary behind me and uh, this hive just here is the one I'm hoping has got at least one super on it that we can take away and uh, extract for uh, bottling up and as you can see worked really well no bees in here at all well okay the old one but there's very few bees in here at all so uh, yeah pleased with that can take that off now, take it home and uh, start extracting. This is the Porter Beerscape I was telling you about. Using the, the crown board here, stops the bees who are all underneath there from coming back up. 
got like two springs in it which uh, act as a one-way door. Bees all crowded underneath. So we're uh, back in the bee shed and the uh, supers are stacked up, waiting to be extracted and uh, I'll probably start this tonight if I've uh, got a bit of time. So first thing we'll need to do is uh, take the cappings off and I'll, I'll show you that uh, in a short while. Uh, first thing to do though is uh, get this extractor un unpacked. So we have a um, we have an extractor in Fleet Beekeeping Association that is uh, rented out to, to members. You can hire it for uh, £10 uh, a hire, which is pretty good value. Uh, it's not worth buying your own. They're very expensive to buy a decent one and um, they uh, really would sit idle for 90% of the time if, uh, if you bought your own. So the honey that uh, you buy is extracted into this. It's uh, just to take the cover off there a minute. Stainless steel extractor, tap on the bottom, and inside we've got a whole series of areas where the frames are put. Frames are put in here, and I'll show you that in a short while. And then this spins round. This one's a nice electric one, so you don't have to spend a lot of manual effort. And it spins round, honey spins out round to the bottom there bit hard to see on the video but the bottom of this container is actually at an angle like that up to the middle down either side so the honey runs around to the edges and you can you can see the tap there down at the bottom so here are our supers uh, we've got the spinner as you just saw um, and uh, basically their rule procedure is book the spinner from the club wait for it to turn up or go and collect it from uh, the member who's currently got it we have quite a good system in Fleet Beekeepers. It's all run uh, on a Google Sheet and uh, we know who's borrowed it and then who's due to have it next. And it's, it's quite a nice structured uh, way of um, running the list. So we always know where the spinner is and uh, you always know who to drop it off to. And it means everyone gets a fair crack at uh, borrowing it and it doesn't get sort of hogged by any one person for days on end. So collect the spinner, get the supers off as we did um, later this afternoon as you've also just seen extract all the honey get the honey into a bucket I've got uh, a couple of buckets under here which will be sterilized and cleaned out uh, later here we go get the honey into there and uh, we'll do that by filtering I just dropped all my bits of wood and um, and then we've got a First thing after that is clean the spinner out and this spinner is due to go back uh, to the beekeeping shop and I've got to drop it off there tomorrow evening so I've got to get on with this uh, this evening really and uh, try and get it done and I might have to be up early tomorrow morning to get all this finished so the spinner can go back ready for the next person to borrow it then I can crack on and get the rest of the honey filtered off from from the bucket and we'll, we'll cover off that uh, in, a, in a, a little while. Okay right so first thing is get the first frame out. I've got my hive tool here. Bees stick everything together with propolis really, really firmly. So there's no chance of anything getting in and everything's nice and secure from their point of view. So we need a tool like this to try and lever it out. So what we have here is uh, the original foundation and then uh, this is where the bees have drawn all the wax out and the first thing we do you've got various options but basically you've got to remove the cappings and uh, I used to use a, a warm knife but it made quite a mess and then a few years ago discovered that a hot air gun is just the right temperature just to melt the cappings off without causing any damage to the, the rest of the frame or the, the honey underneath so what we do is uh, heat the Hot air gun up, and then you can see there we just gently melt off the wax cappings that have be the bees have put over the honey. Like so. There we go, and then we 
plop this into the spinner ready for spinning. The, the supers that were just uncapped slot into the spinner like so. And put the little wooden lugs into the bottom there. There we go. So that's now in. So we'll keep going, taking the cappings off until all of this is full with uncapped supers ready for spinning. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And all ready to spin. Nine, actually, I miscounted. <laughs> so we've got a full container here. I'll just move this to the side a bit. I shall start to spin it a bit so you get the idea, and then I'll have to put the lid on so we don't get end up honey all over this uh, room here. So once it's uh, spun, it ends up looking like this. Lots of beeswax, but empty cells. You can see most of those are empty. Basically, it's still very wet, covered in bits of honey. Put it back on the super. And then we'll take this box when it's uh, all full of wet, but empty frames, and we'll put it back on the hive and the bees will clear it all up. Bees don't like leaving honey anywhere, particularly in the hive. They'll clean it all up. I'll leave it on a week or so probably. And uh, they'll um, take all the honey that's left, take it downstairs, store it in the main brew box probably, or the super just above. And I'll then take the box off after a week and it'll be nice and dry and it can go for storage in the uh, my beekeeping shed ready for next year. So after all that spinning, sorry I wasn't able to film the actual uh, honey coming out of the spinner into the bucket, then a bit of a rush, I had to get the spinner back to the club. Uh, but we've ended up, here's the bucket. Um, this is unfiltered at the moment, as you can see there's a lot of wax debris uh, that I will just now leave to settle overnight. All the wax, or well, most of the wax will rise to the top and then uh, probably tomorrow or Sunday We'll filter it from this bucket into another bucket uh, and in the process remove all the wax and uh, various other bits and pieces that uh, are in the honey and then it should be ready for bottling.